there's been a murder. Oh, they're dead, they are. It's a classic game of Clue. Who done it, where they done it, and which weapon they uh done it with. I say it was Marjorie in the bedroom with a pillow. I say it was Roger on the stairwell with a candlestick. Well, if you don't remember seeing these cards in your game of Clue, well, you're not confused because they're not characters. They're real people in high society Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> real terrible people who brutally murdered an elderly heiress and her nurse for the inheritance money. The oldest Maldiv in the book. Yep. <laughs> uh, we're not on the Oregon Express, people. We are on nope. the beautiful northern shores of Lake Superior in June of 1977, where Elizabeth, heiress to the Congdon fortune, and her nurse, Velma Patila, were brutally murdered. And in this Terrible. episode, we'll be talking about prestigious family, the two brutal murders, and the trial that follows. In case you can't tell by the name, Yikes Murder and Stuff contains themes that are not suited for children. It's also no good for the workplace and probably not your mima and your papa either. We're going to talk about some grim subject matter, probably make uncomfortable jokes, and we're definitely going to be cursing. But if that's something you're into, then put your headphones on and hop in our nondescript windowless van and come see the puppies. <laughs> Welcome back to Murder and Stuff Podcast. I'm Jennifer Sandwich. I'm Lisa Sweatshirt. And I am Acadia Einstein. Hi, Acadia. Hello. Today we're going to tell you about the Glensheen Mansion murders. No, it's not a game of Clue. It's a real-life murder of heiress Elizabeth Congdon and her nurse, Velma Patilla. This is going to be the first of a three-parter. It's going to be a long one. There's a lot to talk about and a lot of crazy rich characters so much information in this one <laughs> there's a lot and it's all ridiculous in this episode we're going to start from the beginning lisa and i are from minnesota we took a trip up to duluth over mother's day we'll tell a little bit about that and we went to visit this glensheen mansion that's in duluth minnesota were you visiting or investigating we were visiting we were just we were on a weekend having fun and decided to. this was going to be one of the things we were going to do was go visit this Glen Shane mansion. That's where the idea of this podcast came from because Jen hadn't heard of the murders. I'm like, yeah, remember the murders from up here? She's like, what murders? And so I was telling her about them. Uh, and then she's right. like, ah. Right. So I didn't even want to go. I'm like, why do I want to go see a bunch of how a bunch of rich people lived? I don't care about them. Then she was like, oh, but there was a murder. I was like, oh, what, what? We must, we <laughs> yeah, must go immediately. To him. Oh, well, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> yes, please. Let's, Let's walk go. more of the grounds and oh, talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Was that where the murder took place? Is that where the murder took place? <laughs> so it, uh, the, I, I'm very, very into the macabre and death and murder. And this was a great place for us to go. It's very Minnesota. So we're going to try to explain to you as if you don't live in Minnesota, because everybody doesn't live in Minnesota. I was going to say you're you're underselling the 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 mystery and wonder that is your home state because <laughs> yes. most people only know of <laughs> anything because of Kirby Puckett or the movie Fargo. <gasps> yes, but, 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 yeah, pretty much. What we have the they have the biggest mall in America with the Mall of America here. Yeah, well, yeah. There's, there's 10,000 lakes. Did you know that? I said Kirby Puckett and Fargo. <laughs> we had a Super Bowl last year. There was that. that oh, yeah. Happened. Maybe Fran Tarkin yeah. if you're 100. You know, yeah. Prince. Do you know who Prince is? Maybe that uh, rings a bell. Yeah. You know? Everybody knows who Prince is. But, of yeah. course they do. And he's from Minnesota, which is the best place in the world. Pretty <laughs> much. So, except it's really fucking cold out right now. And I totally hate it. But <laughs> in summertime, it's beautiful. So it's really worth it. Lisa and Jen are both from Minnesota. Minnesota. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota. Oh, yeah. You're from the actual town where it all happened? I am from the actual town. So I have lots of visual memories of all of the things we're going to be talking about today. Did you live in a mansion? <laughs> I did not live in the mansion. I lived in a oh. house, the smallest house in an area of mansions. Oh, nice. I, wanna, I just want to pipe in really quick because I did go to Lisa's old stomping grounds with her. It, it was a really nice house. It's a beautiful neighborhood. It's gorgeous. It was, might, might have been the smallest house on the block, but it was beautiful. Every house on that block, they're not like McMansions. They're not like those cookie-cutter Rotland homes. Not that there's anything wrong with Rotland homes. Don't sue me. But they all look like 
they were built by an architect. Yes. Yep. And there's two sides to Duluth. There's an east side and there's a west side. And Lisa, which side of Duluth was this on? <laughs> I, 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 I lived on the east side of Duluth. Tell us a little bit about the east side of Duluth, will you please? Well, we kind of had like a whole John Hughes movie go, thing going on in Duluth. So John Hughes <laughs> did the movie Pretty in Pink, which was like from, I think, the 80s or 90s. Yeah, yeah, 80s. So there was like this east side, which was all the owners of business and where they lived. And they tend to live in bigger homes. And they were on the hill overlooking the lake. And then on the west side, where all the basically the blue collar workers lived, it's it's not really like that as much anymore. But back in the eighties, it certainly was. If you picture like pretty in pink, if you take the characters from the movie, which is like kind of stratified classes, on the east side, uh, Steph and Blake would live on the east side. On the west side, it'd be you mean Blaine Bla- from Pretty in Blaine, Pink? Blaine, Blaine. Yeah. Yep, Steph and Blaine. And then on the west side would be Andy and Ducky. The cool kids. There would be a, a pink Carmen Ghia driving up and down those hills <laughs> all over the west side, Duluth. <laughs> well, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. different. It's because so the, the lake is what? Lake Superior? Correct. Right? right? So in Maine, in Portland, Maine, the only city in Maine, there's, <laughs> it, it's, it, well, it's true. The it, It's also the capital. It, <laughs> no, Augusta is the capital. I was going to say. They made it in the middle. God, it, used to, it, it doesn't matter. The only thing you need to know about <laughs> Maine is it's the only one-syllable state, and it's the only state mm. that only borders one other state. Huh. So there. And Stephen Kingy. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. in Portland, it, I mean, the good houses are always the one with the good view. So the east side of Duluth was, you could see the lake, and that's prettier than looking at whatever shit there was, you know, looking west, which I assume was an igloo or some shit. And uh, <laughs> in Portland... There were two views because the whole thing was a peninsula. So there was the, to the east, there was the ocean, of course. But to the west, you could see all the way to the White Mountains, like pretty, like far, far, far away. Oh, cool. So in Portland, there is an eastern promenade and a western promenade where all the fancy houses are. None of them nearly as fancy as the one we're going to talk about, but... Oh, well, here's, yeah. the, here's the thing on the west side. They actually, Duluth is built on the side of this hill. Kind of have to drive down into Duluth, going down towards Lake Superior, which is, Lake Superior looks like an ocean from the land. I mean, it's yeah, a huge it lake. it does. You can't even see across to Wisconsin on some days. And then on the west side, what happens is it, they do, actually, the people on the west side would have a view of the lake. However... All the industry is over there, so their view is blocked by like cranes yeah. and smokestacks. Yes, yeah, smokestacks. Guys things. sitting on girders with lunch pails and Lots shit. Of yeah, right, I guess iron it. ore yes. dropping from you know things, and it's just smoke and it grit is just when you think everywhere. of industry, like you hear like like trains clanking on tracks and you know like jackhammers, and, and you look. When you're driving into Duluth from the south side, com- like coming from the Twin Cities, and you kind of cross this bridge, you can see the t- clear difference between the west side and the east side. One is stark gray and metal and concrete, and the other one is green trees and rocky shores, and it's 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 black and white. It's night and day. Yes. It was even more so in the 80s. Well, we're going to tell you a little bit about Chester Congdon. Y'all ready to talk about Chester a little bit? <laughs> Love Chester. Okay. Love In order to tell the story, we kind of have to give you some history on what the Glenshine Mansion is, who owned it, where it's located. All of these things come into play in this story. The mansion was built by a man named Chester Congdon. Now, he was from Rochester, New York. Not, not Minnesota. Minnesota. Not Rochester, <laughs> Minnesota, because this is what I thought. There's a Rochester, Minnesota way down south, and we thought, oh, he must be from Rochester, Minnesota. No, he's not. He moved to Duluth, Minnesota, eventually, originally from New York, because there were opportunities. New York is full. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I'm leaving. I'm going to go over here where this, <laughs> this big lake is. These rubes won't see me coming. So he talked like that as opposed to, oh, I'm going to go up there, up north, up there, and do my liar business up there. Stop apologizing <laughs> while I rob you. Exactly. <laughs> so his name was Chester Adgate Congdon. Adgate. 
That's, <laughs> that's, that's like a great name. But he wasn't always wealthy. I think he came from pretty middle class or... Actually, fairly poor family. Is that right? Yes, his dad had passed away. So his mom was kind of in these dire straits until he hit it rich. Wow. I got a plan. <laughs> That's what most of his letters to his mom said. I've got a plan. He, and he <laughs> did. So he went to school. I believe he practiced as an attorney. I, I don't know how that worked back then. If if he went to school to be a lawyer, if he just had a knack for it. He was a landowner. He was a teacher for a little while. He was a state legislator in uh, Minnesota for the Republican Party. And of course, they, they know Republicans love business. So it just makes sense. He did everything. See, in 1881, he marries Clara. Now, Clara's the daughter of a reverend from San Francisco. She was a stout woman. Yeah. A <laughs> handsome woman. <laughs> oh, man, she was. <laughs> Her picture is in the show notes. So th- this, is, this is all happening in the 80s, by the way. The... Sorry, oh, the, the, <laughs> the cool ladies with the consumption, 80s. not yeah. the crappy one with cocaine. The, yeah. like, in my 80s, cocaine was medicine. <laughs> the doctor would just subs- prescribe it to you. <laughs> like, well, the 80s, 80s, like I always say, like it's neon and, you know, good times. That was yeah. my 1980s, you know. Well, maybe maybe the neon was just being discovered in it could have the been 1880s. Discovered. So. I think, well, actually, I think you're right. I think it was like 1890s. Yeah. So... <laughs> I mean, it was there's like a, a ton of shit going on there. So, so Congdon moves his ass to Duluth in 1892 to go be a partner in a firm with a guy uh, named William Bilson. So he's gonna he had a private practice in St. Paul for a little while with his wife Clara, and I think they had some kids already at that time. That's all we did. I just <laughs> pumped them into her one after yeah. another. <laughs> <laughs> One thing over time, people just love to fuck. Because you know well, what? There was nothing else to do, and it got dark at 3 o'clock. Yeah, those, those were the days. Yeah, oh, that's what's happening here right now, the Minnesota, because we've lost our daylight savings time, and it sucks. You never see light. Stop whining. In my day, you had to pay to have the sun shine on you. Right. He partners in this private law practice in Duluth and he moves up there because there's all this there's just so much industry going on there's iron ore and uh the taconite. shipping taconite uh, mining which is iron ore while he's at this law firm Chester meets a guy named Henry Oliver Oliver walks in one day to meet with another attorney and the attorney wasn't there so the guy's like hey man where's my attorney and Chester's all like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> He's not here right Come now. to my office. Just th- th- let me flip this name tag over now. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Hello, I am him that you are seeking. <laughs> or I guess, well, he's not here right now. Is there anything I can do for you? So, of course, Henry's Henry's like, "Oh yes, sir. I uh, see. I have this company, uh, the steel company, and I want to come up here and do some mining and make make a whole bunch of money. What do you say?" That sounds fabulous. Great. And and totally on the up and up. Don't, (laughs) when you leave, go out this other door. (laughs) So, so, so that's it. They got together. uh, They, they held hands and they skipped away into the, the mining company business. They skipped away into the mines. (laughs) They went out in the mines. Come with me into this mine. Inside is money. (laughs) This is amazing. We're going to be friends forever. The high five. We did it. We're 48 millionaires now. Uh, so $48 million is what they made doing some business on the Iron Range up there. And Lisa, tell us about a little how far the Iron Range goes, where it's at. Well, the Iron Range is just a huge iron ore deposit that's from basically the Iron Range is the top third of the state. Right. And it's just filled with taconite. And it goes all the way up through Canada. Yes. Right. By yeah. the way. I was worth forty-eight million, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That means that I was worth one point five billion in your primitive dollars. I just it blows this my mind. Is how rich these people got so quickly, so fast. Yes. And- I sold rocks that then got cooked into a yes. different <laughs> kind of rock that other people <laughs> bought. It built America. Well, I mean, he was doing business like with the Rockefellers. The Morgans, the Carnegies, the Hearst. I mean, this is this guy was easily one of the top 
50 wealthiest men in the United States. Could have been Congdon Hall instead of Carnegie Hall, but I didn't like music. <laughs> you don't care for music, do you? <laughs> no, I only like the sound of clanking iron against, I don't know, scabs' heads <laughs> while I break strikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's uh, right. <laughs> So, but Lisa, one of these names could have actually have been Sweatshirt. Is that correct? Your it last could have name? been. Yes, my okay. grandpa was a president of a mining <laughs> company in Silver Bay. Don't look him up. His name was not Sweatsh. Grandpa no, Sweatshirt. No. Nobody needs to Google Sweatshirt. <laughs> However, he was a president of a, a mining company in Silver Bay, which is about two hours north of Duluth. And so, during I don't know. At one point, I lived in Silver Bay. We lived at my grandparents' house, and my grandma and I used to uh, load up in her... They had the first car I ever remember or ever was in that had electric everything. All the windows, all the seats. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Oh, and this yeah. is the 70s, It too. had a yeah. sunroof, even. It was a Lincoln. We'd get High in the tech. car, and it had heated seats and things like that. And my, but my grandma had this, instead of a cassette player, she had a eight-track tape in there. And we'd... Oh, um, <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah, we'd like get in her, her car in Silver Bay, and she'd drive down to Duluth. So we could go to her country club or meet up with her little friends. And we'd be listening to Barry Manilow the whole <gasps> time. Just like Barry Manilow is awesome. I, I, I love Barry Manilow. I'm a big Barry I Manilow love Barry fan. Manilow. Love yep. Barry Manilow. I went and saw him in concert. I love Barry Manilow. This reminds <laughs> me of this movie from the 70s with like Goldie Hawn's like driving down the road in San oh, Francisco. Oh, I know where you're going and, with this one. And, and she's like in this like VW bug with the top down and, and Barry Manilow's like, ready to take a chance again. <laughs> the movie that my uncle's in. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> The movie is Fall Play, by the way. It's a. What was the movie? That was like the 70s or something like that. That was Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn, and the bad guy was an albino. Oh, that's right. And, and a, a, a little, little person. person. Yeah, there's a lot wrong with that movie that you could not play it today. I could actually six degrees of Kevin Bacon, my grandma, from my uncle being in that movie. (laughs) Because you could, you could, yours kind of six degrees of Lisa's sweatshirt. Everybody, everybody in, in the whole world. <laughs> Let's talk about Glen Sheen Mansion. Let's tell them how prestigious and beautiful it is. That's right. You know what? It kind of when you when you drive by it, you don't really get to see it like you do from from the back. The back of the house is like Clara. <laughs> <laughs> You must have had a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, why they made the the clothes so complicated to slow things down. <laughs> that actually makes sense. That's that the, the form of birth control was basically That's right. just how just many buttons you have on your petticoat and lack so, of physical dexterity. Yeah. <laughs> right. Bloomers were to slow things down. <laughs> how many buttons does this have? <laughs> What is this belt is Velcro? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> they started building Glensheen Mansion in 1905. They called it Glensheen because Chester Congdon's family, his ancestral home was in Surrey, England. I don't really know, understand how it was named after it, but it that means Shining Glen. Sheen, the Sheen part of Glen Sheen, he was from the, the county Sheen. Or a city name, a small village named Sheen. Okay, mm-hmm. that's clearing it up. Thank you mm-hmm. for yeah. that. Yeah, didn't they have like this was a this mansion that they're building was not the only place that they had though either. They had no, other they had mansions. A, they had a summer castle in Washington yeah. State. <laughs> they, uh, had the they had they had places in like Florida and Arizona. A big yeah. one in Arizona, I know that. But this house, I mean, a winter castle. So. It, it, yeah, I'm in a summer in Washington, uh, in Yakima. <laughs> that shows how tough I was. I went there in the summer and then went back to cold Minnesota in the winter. Yeah, <laughs> they work so hard, you know. I mean, it's just like that. That only makes sense that he would just make things more difficult on himself. <laughs> That's right. Well, my dad used it. There's like a Mark uh, Mark Twain quote: "The coldest." Winter I ever spent was summer in San Francisco, 
my dad uh, used to come pick me up on his visit- visitation days um, from Minneapolis to Duluth. He'd drive up. It's a three-hour drive if no one is in any, ah, from yes. Minnesota. Yes. Uh, he would drive up to Duluth, and he'd always say, because the temperature drop drops literally like 20 degrees. Uh, he would always say, the coldest winter I ever spent was summer in Duluth. So, <laughs> I, I mean, like, literally every time he picked me up, I'd, like, talk, I'd mouth the words with him. I'd be like, yeah, I got it, Dad. That's a good dad joke. <laughs> yeah. My dad. That joke was get in the fucking mine. <laughs> well, there was twenty thousand feet of this mansion. Those were square feet. Square feet, not just. No, so like... it was twenty thousand feet wide. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were eccentric. <laughs> I never saw the other side. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> oh, but it's a like twelve acres along North Shore of Lake Superior. Now, this is pretty. Uh, pretty expensive property, right? Extremely so, expensive property. Yeah, it was back then and it is now. There's a little creek that runs through it called Tisher Creek that runs through the town up through Duluth. It, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Washes into the lake? Empties into. Empties into the lake. I thought there was a tributary. Is that what it is? It's It's beautiful. We went there in May and it was... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Group back this up because before we got in to see the Tisher Creek, we made up your fake child because of the trip we were on. Remember your fake yeah, kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. We have to talk about your fake kid. <laughs> this is so dumb. Okay, so it's Mother's Day, right? And we're going to go see Glitchy Mansion because there's been a murder there. And I'm all like, you, let's go. And Lisa's like, it's Mother's Day. We get in for free. And I'm like, oh, I don't have a kid. Duh, well, let's just make one up. I'm like, okay, let me get my story straight. Here. Well, but then, but then I'm like, you, we have to have a story because what if they grill us? We need to have if, the background yeah, information. What if the fucking 16 year old cracking gum looking at her phone right? at the ticket booth That's exactly what decides to really put on the heat? <laughs> Well, we were driving. We were driving from uh, Grand Marais, so we had spare time. So we decided to come up with the whole backstory to the fake kid. So we had named. We had. Uh, we had come up like with his what college he went to, what his Jesus. name was. Everything. Yeah, well, like, oh, but we got to come up with a name. <laughs> so. I would have just. I a. I wouldn't have even known, and b. I would have been just. Uh... Glenn? Right. Uh, well, right. you're you're kind of on the money with that one. Yeah, so Glenn Martin Sheen. We yeah. named him Glenn Martin Sheen. <laughs> and then and then oh here's the best part because I was like thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, so he he literally has an IT degree, right? But he he before he like went to work as an IT manager, he was like found in a Saigon hotel, hopped up on uh drugs and alcohol and having a freak out zone. Like you know, Martin Sheen did. <laughs> what? Yeah, go ahead in, ma'am. But wait, my son has a withered eye. I said, go ahead in, ma'am. No, but listen, don't you want to know about no. how bad his second breakup was? Go he was in a Saigon hotel having a freak out on drugs. I don't alcohol. get it. I don't, what do you talk about? Oh, pa- Jen. God, I'd be up laughing. God damn it, Jen. It's a movie called, a little movie called Apocalypse Now. I never oh. saw it. Oh, well, Martin What's Sheen, there's a scene you? in the movie. There's a scene in the movie where uh, Martin Sheen's in a Saigon hotel room freaking out because okay. he's done a bunch of drugs and alcohol <laughs> i have never seen that and i'm gonna watch it immediately i want there's know. a whole list of movies you need to see jen because i need to i know i know back to the glen sheet back to the mansion <laughs> the the total cost to build it in 1905 ish is equivalent to 22 million dollars today and i think that we looked that up and it's actually like that was the equivalent of $22 million in like the 90s. So it would actually be more than that today. I wanted it to be made of iron so I could move it with a magnet, but they told me it was impractical. Actually, you're wrong there, sir. <laughs> you actually are wrong there. This was one of the first houses with iron beams. No, I mean mm. everything, the walls and everything. Oh, well, <laughs> so that's like called a, a jail, and that's yeah. not what happened here. <laughs> what it was was an My iron house beam house. house. Rusting. <laughs> this Ooh, was an iron beam house. Foreshadowing. Yeah, you have to think. You have to think of. Oh, that is foreshadowing. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have to think of the. Uh, you know, this is on the lake. So if you had an iron house on the lake, things could go really wrong <laughs> real fast. Did I mention I have oh, so much money rusted. I can make myself smart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so it's 39 rooms, and I think I have four rooms at the place that I live right now, and this one had 39. Oh, your your <laughs> so. your place would uh, certainly fit in one of the 
the uh, cousins' spare bedrooms. Oh, it fit in the doghouse. Are you kidding me? You, <laughs> but we, how does it match up so that it's 39? Why wouldn't you round it off? And this has nothing to do with the story. It, it, I don't know. That just it fucking feels bugs like, me. But you know what? Maybe there's something to do with the 33 Illuminati. Maybe like Rolling oh, Rock yeah, 33. You know, mm. three goes into nine twice. So that's actually oh, the three, Masons. Three, three. Ew, oh, Masons. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a huge one of those, whatever they're called, Mason clubhouses. A lodge. Oh, a huge. Yeah. In Duluth. Yeah. There's a huge one there. I wish they had lodges like they did in the Flintstones. I would go to the Moose Lodge, wasn't it? Or what was what was the Flintstones Lodge name? It wouldn't be uh, Moose. It'd be some like Brontosaurus Lodge or something. Right? Like I don't remember what it was. It was the Grand Pooba of something. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Anyways, but that's how I think of, I, I don't know why I think of the Cogton story as just a bunch of series of Flintstones meetings. Because I, it there. was a mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He worked at a rock yeah, quarry on the Flintstones. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. But I mean, they definitely lived on the east side of... Of the town of Bedrock. Oh, no, they... <laughs> oh, oh they, yeah, they made... Uh, the uh, Glenshee Mansion made the east side. The estate is actually was willed to the University of Minnesota, so now they give tours and they do events and music and, and stuff there, so... But the place is, like, super, super modern for the time. It, I mean, everything that, that Congdon did, it was the top of the line everything. Spare no expense. He was... the The bathrooms were, like retrofitted with it's like a modern day bathroom like in 1905 it's crazy no, there, there is a shower there that's this huge shower it has 10 shower heads and actually the yeah. main shower head yeah. is like a, a rainfall shower head and then they have jets all around it and it's like i was, I was talking about it with somebody and i remember like a decade ago when that was kind of the fancy thing to put in houses i'm kind of i'm all snobby i'm kind of like glenching did that a hundred years ago. What else you got? You know, and it was right? operated by servants <laughs> with big pumps. <laughs> Most people have seen like the movie or the TV show Down to, Na- Down to Nabby. Yeah. That was supposed to be between 1912 and 1925. I've never seen that, by the way. So I of course you have. I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll start at Down to Nabby and historically wake our, work our way up to the Vietnam War. However, <laughs> <laughs> it's for Apocalypse Now. So if you think about like what the house looked on the set for that, this is kind of it. It was that same Jacobean style, Jacobian style. Yeah, of home. I don't know how to pronounce that. Some people Jacobean? say Jacobean. Acadia I knows. Say... Acadia is really smart. Say it. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> Jacobian. That's Jacobian. okay. Jacobian. Yay. You're our pronunciation guy. Thank you so much. <laughs> I just say it like it's right. I don't know. You have the confidence to pull it off. Like, if you think about this house, like, in perspective, it, it's, you know, this shower was, I just remember just being enamored with this damn shower. Yeah. And it's just so cool. We have a so picture cool. of it. We're going to put it in the show notes. Of course awesome. we are. Yeah. It's my favorite spot in the house, besides the dog house. Actually, with- I'm now convinced it's Jacobean. I think it's Jacobean. Yep. I'm going with that. All right. Change history. <laughs> change. So you just made history. Now you're changing it. Good. That's Good right. Good for you. You're... One point three billion. Ch 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 you encyclopedia. We're going with Jacobian. <laughs> we had a really fun time there. We didn't actually go in to the uh, mansion, which I wish we did because well, but, Jenny, you have to remember, we're two people with ADD. Oh my god! And they made us wait an hour and a half. They tried to make us wait the... for something. They let us wait an hour and a half for the to, for our tour. You yep. can't have two people with ADD nope. waiting an hour and a half. It, we, no, we're done. No, we went basically. What we saw everything there is to see outside. We didn't need a tour or anything. We looked at the stables. We looked at every. We took silly pictures of ourselves doing doing things. We'll put those in the, the show. Arms notes wide open on the terrace. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're yeah. seriously so, saying that you drove for two hours and right. then waited for an hour and a half to yep. see the outside of a house. Correct, sir. And we lied to get in. This is how we do it. This is what we do on weekends. <laughs> this episode we... brought to you by Murder and Stuff Travel. <laughs> Shitty trips for hot days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, but who wouldn't want to travel with a name like that? It, the house was completely sustainable. So it had cows, chickens, horses. It had, um, they were known to take, uh, they had a sleigh that they would, every Christmas, would hook the horses up and bring it into downtown Duluth and back and pass gifts out <laughs> at hospitals. throw iron at poor people. <laughs> throw iron. Here's your iron nickels, folks. Here's a hunk of taconite, <laughs> urchin. 
Yeah, you barely. But my brother has a taconite. But when my grandpa retired, someone gave him a taconite table for a side table for a chair. That thing is like five thousand pounds. So if they're throwing taconite pennies at these people, they were sticking to the ground. They weren't coming off the street. Those things are heavy. <laughs> they're, they're putting eyes out, and causing brain damage. <laughs> Anywho, but these are things that are built because people pick their furniture so they will never, ever, ever have to move it anywhere ever again. Yeah. You better get the feng shui right if your furniture weighs 10,000 pounds. Everything in that house is still the same as it was back then. Nothing has changed. They they didn't move anything. Except for... One stolen painting that we'll talk about later on. Hmm. Oh, I do not know this part of the story. Well, we'll get into that later. I see you held back. I've held some. I've held some things back that you're going to be a little surprised about. Just like the cops do, so they can figure out, you know, who's doing false confessions. <laughs> yeah, right. this is my interrogation style. I love it. I love interrogation it. Interrogation style podcasting. All right, let's keep. Let's keep it. Let's keep it going. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to tell a story about the family on the bridge who's looking at the salmon. We're F trying to take a family picture. Over. We're really like, yeah, F that family. F fuck em. them. They're, they're the reason we left. So, anyways. That and I spent 22 hours watching bees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chester gets into politics. Yay. He is a member of the Republican Party. Um, he served in the Minnesota That's House. That's when we were good, mostly, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were making industry and... Where they were making industry. Doing business stuff. Yeah. Building <laughs> railroads. I know making so much boats. about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like well, there should be some industry music in the background. Maybe I'll pop that in. Like, doo, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah. He's in the Minnesota house for four years, 1909 to 1913. I, they're, they're wealthy people who do really, really good work. They did a lot of philanthropy, tons of community projects, donating land and art. In 1913... Because he's still super involved in politics. He's going out and he's campaigning for a Republican presidential um, candidate. candidate. And he's moving and grooving. He's doing stuff. He's a business guy. He's, you know, a politician. And he's trying to make moves, make deals. And he is in St. Paul, Minnesota, at the St. Paul Hotel. And just days after a Democrat was elected to be president the next year. Woodrow Wilson. Well, Woodrow Wilson. Yep, that's right. He he dies. Yep. This is how much I hate Woodrow Wilson. Ah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm so broken hearted ah. that a Democrat ah. won. Well, that's I, the urban legend is that right. he was so broken hearted that he passed away because of right. Democratic right. president. Uh, what What is a uh, pulmonary embolism? So he had a uh, lung clot. Yeah. Uh, didn't you say that he called Clara or something? Well, like before? they didn't really do the phones back then, but he did write a letter to her and say, you know, said, I'm not feeling so well. I'm going to be stuck in, I'm going to be in St. Paul for another three, four weeks, but I'll make it okay. home. And then he okay. just suddenly died. And then boom. Boom, dead. Oh, I'm not, oh, he's not coming home at all. Nope. But I, I wonder if he smoked cigarettes like everybody, everybody smoked cigarettes back That's then. I wonder if it's, we thought they were vitamins. <laughs> Is that Chesterfields? <laughs> the Chesterfields. Of course, he smoked Chesterfields. Do you want to? You right. know, you know. Why I think Chesterfields. You want to know that their campaign ad back then, or back at some point in time. Well, Ronald Reagan was the face of Chesterfields at one. We point. We know this because we did a project in school about yes. advertising of of cigarettes. Yeah. yeah, and he was, and their their ad was that they were the healthier cigarettes of all the cigarettes <laughs> out there. <laughs> that was- but that was that their one, like, for the ladies that was like, you're so smart to smoke Virginia Chesterfield. Virginia Slims was the ladies' cigarettes. Yes. So he was 63 years old. He worked really super hard. He no like, naps. Now, like I no. always say, nobody to be takes fair, naps. No. I didn't work really hard. I sat around and yelled a lot. <laughs> <Right>? People, <laughs> People, when they heard that voice, they were like, I better do what he says. He sounds Look serious. how hard he's working because he's rich. And he's, that must be how it works. Yes, and he's yelling a lot, so he must know what's going on. Because that's right. Yeah. It's well, like, the attention. way he passed away always reminds me of that uh, president, the one who 
did the speech without his jacket on in the rain. Oh, William Henry Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I always get this, like, whenever I think of uh, like... William Henry Harrison, I always think of, like, James Brown. Like, he's out in the rain. He's, like, singing away, you know, giving his speech. And this guy, he, he bends down because he's getting <laughs> sick. And, like, a guy comes from the side and throws a, his jacket over him. He's like, <laughs> hey! And then he gets back up and starts <laughs> doing my speech. And then he does. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> fuck this coldness. Yeah. Dad. I'll show him how tough I am. Oh, no. I've made a terrible mistake. So tough because you know what? You can't be that tough if you're going to just die. Oh, he went out in a huge storm with just like a little shirt on. And they didn't have penicillin back then. I'd, or did they? Was I don't penicillin? know if they did or not. They, no, I don't know it was just was. called mold then. Oh, though. wait, wait. No. It was like Arcadia said. It was uh, Arcadia said it was like a gigantic bottle of cocaine infused water. Yeah, that's right. You know, so that's all they had. <laughs> I'd be getting sick all the time. <laughs> I'd be sick. All, yeah, I'd be like, I'd be oh, like, the well, migraines. I think I'd be coming hysterical. I'm gonna yeah. live fast and die young in this time. Period. I need my laudan. <laughs> Where's my laudan? Yeah. <laughs> they had seven kids. One of the kids died. Poor dead kid. The dead kid. Yep. Uh, like a two-year-old or something. I don't know what happened, but it's dead uh, kid. Uh, no, actually, I he uh, Scarlet Fever. What? Scarlet yeah. Fever? That, yep. Oh, man, I cannot stand her. She's the worst. <clears throat> Elizabeth is the second to youngest of the living children, mm-hmm. I believe, and the youngest daughter. So she's off at college at Vassar. She comes home to take care of her mother, Clara, as she's in her 60s also, you know, and a big 39-room empty nest house. And, Must you know, be she, rough. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, with a view view of the lake. Yeah. Come home and take care of me. I, I need you. So she did. You mean I can drop, I can stop studying and stop going to school and never have to work again for the rest of my life? Oh. Sweet. Yeah. Yo. Sold. I'll do God. that. You know, like. I, <laughs> man, does that ever that, that sounds that, great. Doesn't that sound great? It sounds <laughs> wonderful to me. Oh, I would not have a problem with a leisurely lifestyle. <laughs> no. I'm 100% sure of it. I'd slide right into that lifestyle yeah. just fine. So <laughs> when her mother dies in 1950, we're kind of bopping ahead here a little bit, but she, she inherits Glenshee. So this is how Elizabeth Congdon ends up owning Glenshee. Well, that's what you get when you when you hang around and take care of mom instead of going off Fucking around like the rest of them did. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. and, and that's fair. Got to play the long game, people. Long con. Yep. Clara lived until she was 96 years old, so Elizabeth just never left. That is she, insane to me. She went home. That's a lot of taking care of. And she never left. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This is literally like 1950 is when she died. So, But she uh, was a progressive lady. For the times, she never married. She almost got married, though. Mm-hmm. And I think, Lisa, you know the story a little bit better than I do. Cause yeah, you know yeah, just because I've read read the right book. <laughs> yeah, so she almost got she married. She almost what got married. What happened with that? She was married. Almost. <laughs> she, <laughs> so there was a Fred Wolven, who was the son of Captain Augustus B. Wolven, who was Great friends with Chester Condon. <laughs> of the Transylvania Wolves. Well, the Transylvania <laughs> Wolves. <laughs> they do not name. like silver bullets. They were not <laughs> mining silver up in Duluth. Nope. nope. So, uh, so um, Captain Augustus, his son Fred, uh, met up with Chester's daughter Elizabeth, and they kind of, he was like, Fred was like a big catch, like the top catch of Duluth. And um, they were... Yeah, he was hot shit. He was hot <laughs> shit. And... Um, he had asked Elizabeth to marry him, but they did kind of announce it to the public. It was kind of this hidden secret, and she, like, wore her engagement ring inside her bra and such. And um, <laughs> she, she, she not only, she's just like, okay, I'll take your ring on one condition. We don't tell Make anybody. Several conditions. Don't tell anybody. I'm not going to wear it on that ring in public, and it's going to be the secret between me and you. But I will take this ring. Thank you very much. Yeah, because that confuses <laughs> me. Because most of the time, if you're doing something <laughs> like that, it's like the guy would be ugly, and you just don't want to admit my, to your friends you're dating him. So he's like, you're you're yeah going to a movie boyfriend, you know, like in the dark, and nobody sees you or sees him. But he was <laughs> yeah. supposed to be like really good. Hey, looking. wait a minute. <laughs> I. Arcadia, don't get your feelings hurt. It's, it's not. I'm not totally saying not that about, about him. I'm just saying. So many things make sense now. 
my whole teen years make sense. <laughs> Until I got rid of the acne. Then I was Amen. like, and then I got to go to restaurants. <laughs> right. So you have to be seen in public with somebody else. Anywho, so they hid their engagement. And then later on, I don't even know the time length. I don't think it was very long. Like Elizabeth was like, hey, Fred, here's the deal. I'm not feeling like I could love you for the rest of my life. So engagement off. Sorry about that. Oh. And then, here's here's your bra ring back. And, yeah, um, right? So then Fred's like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so like, and he actually takes the engagement ring and like literally Rose Calvert's it and throws it into Lake Superior out of sheer... <laughs> sadness you know why they... he's like fucking ring got closer to that titty than i ever did yeah, oh! exactly. <laughs> i've got resentments <laughs> so histrionic their lives it just this is why they had so many fainting couches back then. no doubt like, everybody's like gl- grabbing pearls and fainting yeah. on couches and oh my take this you Lake, I'm gonna yeah, throw my ring at you. This superior. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if that. I wonder if that ring's still out there. I I, I always wonder about that. But it's you know, mm. Lake Superior is so big. Where would you find it? You know what I mean? Like, so, we should t- we should dive it. We should dive it for sure. Yep. But then another thing that always comes to mind is because like he, Fred was smitten, like was in love with her. He actually never married. After, he never oh, married. Oh, he never got married. No, he was <laughs> holding that torch for her. So whenever I think about, like, whenever I think about this story, not only do I think of Titanic and throwing yeah. jewelry off of things, <laughs> I think about so dramatic. I well, but I think about um, what's that movie with John Cusack? The one where um, say anything, say anything. Say anything. <laughs> I like see like I see this this Fred standing out in the rain, you know, like standing out in the backyard <laughs> of Glen <laughs> Sheen. The window, yeah, holding up, you know, just holding up a, a boom box, He's like a big troll up. Uh, of his yeah, head. this is it's really like nineteen oh, hundred. Jesus Christ! It's like ragtime music playing Peter Gabriel's "The Light, The Heat." Your eyes. I am complete. That's ridiculous. He had to hire somebody else to crank it. When he passed, when Fred passed, in his will, he willed money to Elizabeth to purchase a ring for her to wear to commemorate their lifelong friendships. She bought <sighs> this sapphire dorm. Oh, damn it. And so I'm like, wow, you really like commemorative damn. rings. You know, like, damn. <laughs> this is the friend zone. This is the, this is how tragic the friend zones could end up. This because- is the ultimate friend zone. Yeah. Fred held on to that I was thinking he was going to come out of the friend zone till the day he died, literally. <laughs> oh, my God. What if they got married? What if they had a baby, though? Think about this. And they named their baby. What if they had a baby and they named it Wolfgang, which is the best name ever for anything ever? Yes, it is. They Love could, that name. They could have called him Wolfie Wolfie. That's oh, mouthful. Well, maybe that's Wolfie, why Wolfie, she never married Wolfie. him. They, oh, maybe it was like, nope, I can't do this. We're going to have to have a Wolfgang child. We're gonna have to have a wolf gang. I'm not doing she it. She did. She it, it was just too much. Yep. Yeah. So. Yep. Well, she she didn't have a wolf gang child, which is a just unfortunate. It's a that's a terrible, tragic part of the story. Not the most tragic, but she nope. was super cool lady. She's she adopted two baby girls in her 30s, and as a sing, unmarried mother, this was something that people didn't do at that time and it was looked upon as her just more uh philanthropy just more you know trying to help people so she adopts a a daughter in 1935 oh sorry 1932 three-month-old little girl from north carolina her name is marjorie and 1935 three years later she adopts another baby girl and her name is jennifer susan oh yep and their personalities were polar opposites like Marjorie was introverted, shy, black hair, brown eyes maybe, I don't know, darker eyes, um glasses, glasses wearing, um, no friends. No friends, yeah, yeah. And uh, Jennifer Susan was the exact opposite. 
She was cool. She was fun. She had a ton of friends. She was gregarious. Everybody liked her because off- that's how Jennifer's are. Oh, Lisa. Right? Oh, at least because I hang out with one, oh, so I know. I love you, Lisa. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> All right. Well, Elizabeth is awesome, like us, Jennifer's and Lisa's, and mm-hmm. Marjorie's not that not, not so much. Elizabeth, the, the rest of her life is doing various charity work for for baby stuff and women's clinic. She opened a women's clinic in the 30s that eventually became a Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. So she was, what you're saying is she didn't do everything that everybody else of her time did. No. She and Very progressive. She was nicer than everybody else, and she took care of people, and she was yeah. honest with Wolfgang, blah, blah, yeah. blah, and everything like that. And all that loveliness got her was dead. Real dead. This lady, she was at a volunteer at a hospital. She was trained as a nurse. She did this whole, how do you say it, Acadia? The, their family motto was noblesse oblige. How do you say that? Noblesse oblige. Oh, I love it. If you're rich, give some of your money to poor people. That's right. It's called, it's the noble obligation. And that's their family yeah, mm-hmm. motto, and she did it. But there's a little bit more. We're going to jump ahead a little bit, but mm-hmm. history is fun. And we've been joking around this whole time about history, but what happens next is extremely gruesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, it, listen, this is not a show called Everybody Lived Happily Ever After and Died in Their yeah, Sleep yeah, and Stuff. Right? Yeah, it's murder and stuff. <laughs> so, it's a lot of runway for this murder. Yeah. <laughs> this, yes, there is. Well, we're going to take off now because what happens <laughs> next to Elizabeth Com- Congdon is extremely gruesome. So we're going to take it down a notch for this. On uh, June 26, 1977, Elizabeth Congdon is much older now. This is... Disco reigned in the land. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh... She didn't understand it at no. all. No, no. Well, these, these kids these days with their music... Elizabeth Congdon and her nurse, she had a full-time nursing staff. Her nurse's name was Velma Patilla. Her and Elizabeth were found murdered at the Congdon mansion on the morning of June 26th. She was a feeble old lady. She had had a stroke. She was confined to a wheelchair. She had diabetes. She couldn't speak well. She was pissed off because she had spent her time taking care of her mother and she got stuck with a nurse and she couldn't express her irony through her stroke face. (laughs) Not quite, but... uh... No, but at, at most of the staff that worked at Glensheen was second generation yeah. workers. They were all they were family. It was like all family members. Yeah. It was crazy. So, yeah. So it was a it was a really tight group of people. I don't know that kind <laughs> of love. <laughs> you know? Me, me neither. I'm cool with it though. I'm I'm here for you, Lisa. Whenever you need me, let me know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is where it gets kind of gruesome because Velma had retired like Yeah, like a month yeah, prior. And she was called in. <laughs> Because somebody couldn't make a shift and they were like, hey, can you fill in? So she, yeah, she's half of Danny Glover, like, I've got too old for this shit. And then I'm not even supposed to be here today. That's that's her life. Like right at the end. She's Dante from Clerks. Like she's, I wasn't even supposed to be here today. If you wanted to play some roof hockey, that's the fucking house to play roof right. hockey on. Yeah, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's clerks. Yeah, wasn't well, supposed to be there. She's yep. tired. Dana Glover, oh, lethal weapon. Her. And she ends up getting she ends up getting murdered. Mm-hmm. That's not a good day at work. No. No. Especially since her entire job consisted of watching an old lady sleep. This was not in the contract. Well, she was basically there from what it said. Is she was there because she missed Elizabeth. Yes. Like she said to her husband, like, I know I shouldn't go back. We're retired. We're trying to start our retirement. But I miss Elizabeth and everybody I used to work with. So I'm just going to do it this one night. <laughs> also, the place where I work is nicer than I my oh, house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Six of my houses into this place. <laughs> She's going back for the shower. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> Yeah, she was friends with Elizabeth, and she was friends with the staff, so, yeah, it was kind of a no-brainer, just make a couple extra bucks, and, you know, it's not going to make a big deal out of it, you know, she's retired, her husband didn't want her to go. She's coming up the steps to the second floor landing, she runs into 
an intruder. No, she's coming from upstairs on the second floor down to the Oh, lane. and the intruder is coming upstairs. Yep. Oh. She runs into a person who's not supposed to be there. And can you imagine the terror? I... No, no. Well, this intruder beats the piss out of her. The intruder uses a huge brass candlestick and uh, beats her with it. So you lied then at the beginning of the show when you said it wasn't like Clue. It's exactly like Clue. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's it's a Clue murder with a candlestick. It, yeah, yeah. On the landing. Right. <laughs> yep. She was punched. She was tied up on one of her wrists with her own stocking that was tied so tightly the coroner couldn't remove it until the autopsy. What? Apparently, yeah, it, it was, was like so dug in her tight. skin, and yeah, they had to cut it out. Yeah. Jesus. So it then, was... then it couldn't have been. I mean, that you don't go. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tie up the nurse with what? what? I don't know. I assume she'll be wearing her own rope. Yeah. This was, I think, the sloppiest murder ever. I don't think they, for one, the intruder did not, I don't think, intended to even encounter her. I think he, what the yeah. plan was is to see, steal some things and murder Elizabeth. <laughs> you know? I saw that nurse. She wasn't even supposed to be here today. <laughs> she wasn't even supposed to be here today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and then. Um, oh, she fought back she fought so back. hard. I think what he's going to do is they had tied up the left, left wrist and then they were the, the intruder was going to tie up the right wrist and stick her into like one of the spare 38 rooms that they had and kind of commit the murder, steal the stuff, run away and Velma would have lived, but it hurt the she fought back so fiercely and threw that plan plan right off the rails. Yeah. Jeez. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's what you get. Well, yeah. Now what did you learn? The lesson here, kids is give up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Give up. Play, play lay down. Play dead. <laughs> Tie yep. yourself up and jump in the basement. Yeah. Yep. Play possible. <laughs> Whatever they want, give it to them. Yep. yep. Well, they had found there. What they had found blood blood splatter on the ceiling, which is twenty feet above the the crime scene. Jesus. Christ. So there's blood splatter all over the wall. This is gigantic. It's like the main grand staircase. Like, think of like the staircase in what's that movie? Gone with the Sc wind. Gone with the wind. You're reading my mind. I was like, you're gonna get kissed and kissed good by somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> but yeah. I was gonna do a line from the movie. But um, there. It, so this is grand staircase, and it is just from the landing to the second floor, soaked in blood, blood splatter everywhere, everywhere. teeth. Everywhere. The poor Velma, because she was beaten with her shoe, that her heel had fallen off her shoe, and there were three nails out the bottom of the sole, and she had puncture marks all over her body from oh, being oh, oh, Yeah, yeah. Oh. So that's even worse, like, oh, well, I'm going to tie you up with your own socks, and then, wait, what will I kill you with? Oh, the shoe that I took off to get at your socks? And then I'm going to mm. grab this candlestick and hit your face 23 Jesus times. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah, she was brutalized. Brutalized. Uh, Mildred Garvew arrived at 7 a.m. in the morning, got Elizabeth's insulin ready, from, found the cook. People were in the house while this was going on, by the way. Oh, can I interject an interesting fun fact? Not fun fact. Horrible. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. You can a say fact. fun. Sure. It's okay. 2018. We're just jealous of the dead. So yeah. just. <laughs> <laughs> so as Velma's being beat, there are other staff members sleeping throughout the house. And it, it's a large house. So it's not like you can hear exactly what's going on. But one of the, I think it was either the cook or one of the maids, dog had woken up at about 2.15, something around there, or 2.30, 2.45, would not stop barking. It was like scratching at the door. It was like this little poodle. And she's like, Ugh, uh, dog, go to sleep. I'm tired. I got to do work tomorrow. You know, and picked the dog up and put it in her bed. It was like trying to calm it down. But the dog was like kind of insistent for like 15, 20 minutes scratching at the uh, door. Shut yeah. up, you yappy little dog. Well, like, yeah, what? shut up, dog. Yeah. But yeah, the, the dog's like, I, I got a murder to solve. I got a killer to bite. <laughs> yeah, Why, this is my one thing I'm supposed to do when I'm doing it. Yeah. Thanks and a lot. And you're telling me to shut up. Yeah. I've got I've got info here, people. 
You know, that's yeah. what the dog's thinking. But there were people in the house. There was a there was a yappy little dog who seemed to know everything that was going on. And yeah. all the dumb humans were just like, hey, shut your little dog mouth. Yep. The Mildred shows up. I, I She's a head maid or something. The next morning, and everybody's doing their stuff, going about their day, doing the thing. She shows up, but the fucking door is not locked. The front door is not locked. Might have been that maid, Hazel Conjure, who found that. She just doing her daily rounds, 7 a.m. She's like, fuck, door's not locked. What the fuck? This always happens. They don't have, like, a security system. They have this very extremely routine uh, situation of, going yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> locking everything up, making sure everything's, you know, secure. And, and that was one thing. Mildred, the person who's going to be delivering the insulin upstairs, starts to go upstairs and she sees – two legs dangling off the bench on the landing between the first and second floor. Hmm. She goes up to it. It's Velma Patilla. She didn't even recognize her at first. Her face is covered in dried blood. There's blood all over the fucking place. Her jaw is visibly broken. There's a bloody candlestick holder laying on the floor. This woman is a nurse, so she... Gave her the insulin. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> wrong this might be the <laughs> diabetes <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so, i know what she didn't she... die of diabetes. <laughs> 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 that was not what mildred's on the case with the insulin i'm <laughs> ruling things out <laughs> uh, but she checks to see if she's alive she's not her whole face is caved in beyond recognition so mildred being an awesome nurse immediately runs past her body goes up concerned for elizabeth walks into elizabeth's room elizabeth is laying on the bed face up with the sheets pulled back all the drawers pulled out of the dressers kind of uniformly pulled out Hmm. a killer with ocd right there's a and a pillows over elizabeth's face she pulls the pillow back elizabeth is is noticeably dead but there's a there's bruises on her left arm. The one arm that can move yeah. is all bruised up because Jesus. she's been fighting. Yeah. And this, the skin. Who's the killer? A baby? Uh, <laughs> right? Well, then, check this out. She she had rubbed the skin off of her nose, fighting this pillow over her face. Yeah, and it's oh, a sad it. pillow. It's a sad pillow, people. It's not like. You know, satin pillow. It's yeah. all smooth and soft and nice. And she was fighting a satin pillow so hard that she rubbed the skin off her nose. Everybody wanted to live so badly. I know. Nobody was giving up shit. It was everybody fought. Who would kill a couple of old ladies and also wh- wh- who fights so hard with the elderly feeble? I cannot <laughs> defeat these elderly women. <laughs> it's like, what are they like? Part of the elderly gang of women from oh, Monty she's Python? So you know? wiry. <laughs> Literally, there's like some elderly caregivers out there that do a better job of murdering their patients Jesus. than this right? guy, this I person know. did. You know, well, we'll I mean, probably do a story on one. I know. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. Un- unbelievable. Like this intruder goes into the house to rob, probably kill one of these people, but not both of them. And it was just a slaughter. It was a mess. It the whole thing just reeked of ineptitude. How about we put it kindly and say a super low IQ? That's a nice way of putting it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Now you know what happened. You know about Duluth. You know about Minnesota. You're going to know a lot more about Minnesota because we love Minnesota. We love Minnesota. We love it. We love it. <laughs> and you know about Chester Congdon. You know about Elizabeth Congdon. And you know that she's got two daughters. You know about Taconite and yep, Iron. Yep. yep that's you, You've learned a lot today. But next week, you're going to learn even more when we have Glen Sheen Part 2 coming at you where we talk about other things. We're going to talk about... (laughs) About how tough my brood was. Well, we're going to basically talk about the one suspect. Everybody pointed to one suspect, and we're basically going to get into who that person is and what they're about. It wouldn't be anyone with Congdon blood, because our blood is filled with iron. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right, well, we still don't have a catchphrase, so, um... Okay, bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> and here's your recap precap for part two of the Glensheen Mansion murders on murder and stuff. Greyhound the horse. 
manual strangulation, iron ore, tech night, shopping spree, forgery, <laughs> spending money, mom's tab, yeah, burlap sack, Titanic Marjorie, ripped up furniture, bad dog, garage on fire, oh no, don't you worry about that, skater mom, carnival act, insurance, payouts, stolen painting, cover up, marmalade, first attempt, Mike Billings, burnt house, parents without partners, professor psych, <laughs> rancher lifestyle, turquoise cowboy, Van Evra Lodge, Burnt Pillow, Hot Marjorie, Perpetual Bitter Goggles.